Hi everyone, I'm Shu Zhe Wang. I'm a graduate student at the University of Michigan. Today I'm going to talk about single cell chromatin accessibility delineates cellular identities of the neonatal organ of corti. Hearing is mediated by the organ of corti, which is within the cochlea of the inner ear. The organ of corti is composed by 8 to 10 different cell types. Particularly, hair cells are the sensory receptors in response to sound waves. Supporting cells serve a diverse set of functions in hair cells. Together, hair cells and supporting cells play important roles for hearing. However, the gene regulation mechanisms of cochlear development are not fully understood. Weddington's epigenetic landscape is a metaphor for how gene regulation modulates development. During differentiation, a cell corresponds to a bow rolling down a hill, while epigenetics correspond to the landscape and affect the cell differentiation. Transcription factors, TFs, binds to the DNA regulatory elements to control gene expression, therefore enabling a single genome to give rise to a diverse cell types. Our goal is to identify regulatory landscape promoting the differentiation and maturation of the organ of corti. To achieve our goal, we applied a TAXIC, which is the abbreviation of IC for transposes accessible chromatin sequencing. It enables us to understand the comprehensive epigenomic landscape by accessing genome-wide chromatin accessibility. Briefly, an engineered hypersensitive transposes TN5 is loaded with sequencing adapters. TN5 segmentation simultaneously fragments DNA only in regions of open chromatin and tags the resulting DNA with sequencing adapters to generate a library for PCR amplification. A TAC-seq is useful because it profiles regulatory elements like promoters and enhancers, characterizes genome-wide DNA protein interaction, and positions nucleosomes. We applied the ataxic technique for developing organ of corti at single cell resolution using 10x single cell ataxic protocol. In order to enrich for supporting cells and hair cells, we used the 801 GFP allele in combination with FGFR3 TD tomato lineage tracing at postnatal day two. Cochlear ducts were divided into apical and basal compartments. Then we used flow sorting to isolate individual cells and specialized supporting cells and hair cells. We sequenced around 2,000 cells with read depths of 80K fragments per cell. After initial quality control, we identified six clusters. We did some sanity checks for a single cell ataxic dataset. Here are some quality matrices could be used for evaluation. The first one is TSS enrichment plot. Fragments from the accessible regions are expected to be enriched around the TSS of the genes. Our data indicates that fragments are enriched around TSS for all six clusters. The second evaluation method is to look at the distribution of fragment lengths. Fragments are expected to show enrichment around 100-200 base pair, indicating nucleosome-free and mononucleosome-bound fragments. Our plot shows two bumps which are around 100 base pair and 200 base pair. The take-home message is our single-cell ataxic data has a pretty good quality for further analysis. Starting the downstream analysis, the first step is cell type identification. Traditionally, the common way to identify the cell types for each cluster is to use marker gene. Because the data is very sparse, we had a hard time to identify the cell types only using marker genes. For example, 801 and FGFR3 are the markers we use to sort for hair cells and supporting cells. However, visualizing the accessibility for both genes didn't resolve major differences between the clusters. Based on the problems we faced, we generated an age-matched single-cell RNA-seq dataset using the same mouse model. Flow gates were set a little bit less conservative, therefore we included more cell types than we expected. We sequenced 1,000 cells with the depth of at least 100k rays per cell, and we identified 11 clusters in total.
Similarly, the first step for the analysis is to identify the cell types. We use the marker genes like ATO1 and FTFR3 to identify cell types. To be more specific, we run differential analysis and we identify differentially expressed genes for each cluster. Here we show top 100 DE genes sorted by p-value for each cluster associated with cell type identities. From the differentially expressed gene list, we saw some familiar genes on dot plot, like ATO1, FGFR3, and etc. Those genes are known gene markers to annotate cell types. I highlighted some genes on the dot plot. Based on the previous knowledge, we identified mesenchymal cells, Shivon cells, supporting cells including pillar cells and data cells, endothelium cells, melano cells, hair cells, lateral supporting cells, progenitor Shivon cells, mitral supporting cells, roof cells, and immune cells. Similarly, we identify differentially accessible regions for our six ataxic clusters. Here, we show top 100 differentially accessible regions sorted by p-value for each cluster associated with cluster numbers. To identify the cell types for a single-cell ataxic dataset, we calculated a J-card similarity matrix, which compares the similarities between differentially expressed genes from RNA-seq and annotated differentially accessible genes from ataxic. The redder, the more similarity between two datasets. For example, cluster 1 in ataxic has the most similarity with hair cell cluster from RNA-seq. Cluster 2 is more similar with supporting cell cluster from RNA-seq. Based on the heat map, we think cluster 1 is hair cell cluster, cluster 2 is supporting cells, cluster 3 is roof cells, cluster 4 is mesenchymal cells, cluster 5 is endothelium cells, and cluster 6 is immune cells. Next, we checked the performance of individual genes at single gene level. We picked one gene per cluster for virilization, and the gene is an overlapped gene between differentially expressed genes from RNA-seq and annotated differentially accessible genes from ataxic. The six clusters are distributed along the y-axis, and the candidate genes are plotted along the x-axis each divided into chromatin accessibility column and a matching violin plot for transcript level. The POL4F3 locus were determined to be differentially accessible in hair cells, and POL4F3 transcript was found to be differentially expressed in hair cells as well. HACE5 is a marker for supporting cell groups, and so on and so forth. Additionally, the pink shaded bar in the POL4F3 gene is a cochlea-specific enhancer gene from a previous publication. Our goal is to identify regulatory elements promoting the differentiation and maturation of the organ of CORTI. Firstly, we identify cell type-specific TFs by estimating transcription factor associated accessibility from single-cell ataxic data using Chrome VAR. We calculated these scores to represent motif accessibility. Then, we identified about 100 differentially activated TFs. We show this result in a volcano plot. On the left side, we could observe hair cell-specific TFs, which include ATO1, POL4F2, LHX3, and etc. On the right side, we could identify supporting cell-specific TFs, for example, SOX2, SOX10, and etc. Only identifying cell type-specific TF is not enough. We are wondering how these TFs function in cell. Do they act as reactivators or repressors? Secondly, we inferred activating and repressing function of the developmental TFs. We assumed increasing the expression level of an activator will increase the average accessibility, and increase the expression level of a repressor will decrease the average accessibility. Based on the assumption, we calculated the correlation between the significance of mRNA expression level and the chromatin accessibility from t-tests for both hair cells and supporting cells.
I highlighted some TFs in the dot plot. And the red dots represent repressors, while green dots represent activators. For example, LHX3 and ATO1 are activators. ZFHX3 and GLIF1 are repressors. To validate our classification, we featured four TFs, including two activators and two repressors. Take LHX3 as an example. LHX3 is highly expressed in hair cell cluster, and it is more accessible in hair cell cluster based on chromatin accessibility. Additionally, flanking regions of the TF binding sites of LHX3 are more accessible. The so chromatin confirmation could be validated with TF footprintings. Footprint is a phenomenon that the presence of transcription factors binds to the DNA, prevents the enzyme from cleverage in nucleosome-free region. From the footprinting results, we could say LHX3 is more accessible in hair cell cluster and it creates high DNA accessibility in the intermediate flanking regions. There is another example. GLIF1 is highly expressed in hair cell cluster compared with supporting cell cluster. However, it is more accessible in supporting cell cluster based on chromatin accessibility. There is a negative correlation between the gene expression and chromatin accessibility. GLIF1 is identified as a repressor, which also characterizes this footprinting plot. For a repressor, the binding of the TF increases the accessibility at binding sites. On the other side, repression is globally associated with closed chromatin. LHX3 and GLIF1 are hair cell specific transcription factors. Here we screened another two su supporting cell specific TFs, which are SOX2 and ZFHX3. And we found SOX2 is an activator for supporting cell cluster, while ZFHX3 is a repressor for a supporting cell cluster. We already identified cell type specific TFs and classified TF activities. We were wondering how these TFs regulate downstream target genes driving the maturation of hair cells and supporting cells. Based on this question, we were inspired by Scenic algorithm. We adopted elements of Scenic but modified the following aspects. We integrated single cell ataxic accessible regions and we identified activator regulons and repressor regulons. To be more specific, we first identified co-expression modules. Secondly, by integrating single cell ataxic information, we identified putative TF binding sites from accessible regions where the TF binding sites is within 50 kb of the TSS. Based on that, we identified regulons, which are groups of genes that are regulated as units. Then we calculated the activity of the regulons by considering TF expression for each cell. We applied our gene regulatory network analysis to hair cells and supporting cells to determine the downstream target genes. We generated regular activity heat map with theoretical clustering at single cell resolution. Each column is a single cell, and each row is a regular. The upper bar represents cell types, and the left bar shows the classification of the regulons which could be the activators or repressors, listed on the right. We observe that ATO1 LHX3 regulons are highly activated in hair cell cluster, while SOX2, SOX10, GLIF1 regulons are enriched in supporting cell clusters. Previous publications showed that the development of the organ of CORTI precedes ingredient. For example, ATO1 starts expressing in the base of the cochlea around embryonic day 14.5, and during the next day, it extends towards the apex. We are wondering how the gene expression gradients develop. Focusing on the hair cell cluster, we determined differentially expressed genes and differentially accessible regions, comparing cells isolated from apex with cells isolated from base. We identified 147 differentially accessible regions and 427 differentially expressed genes along the tonic topic axis. 
we use those genes to generate a 1D PCA plot resolving individual cells' relative position along the tonotopic axis. Next, we featured candidate genes. Take PKHD1L1 as an example. Accessibility is color-coded from gray closed to purple open. For better visualization, we also plotted a regression line. Apex to base correspond to the y-axis and the accessibility are responded on the x-axis. Similarly, we present the RNA-seq data with a different color code. Green correspond to no transcript detected and red correspond to high expression. In summary, PKHD1L1 is highly expressed and more accessible in the basal compartment compared with apical compartment. Our finding has been validated with a published paper using in-situ hybridization. It showed a base to apex gradient at postnatal day 2. In summary, we predicted the activating and repressing function of the developmental TFs in cochlear hair cells and supporting cells. And we inferred TF associated with downstream target genes promoting the maturation of hair cells and supporting cells. And finally, we resolved the original structure of the organ of corti along the apex to base axis. And thank you so much for everyone in our lab, especially thank you, Dr. Waldhaus, and thank you, Dr. Liu. And thank you, everyone.